Happy Thursday! Oh my gosh, this is like one of my favorite topics ever. I get to talk about poop. Just kidding, I'm not going to talk about poop. But poop is one of my favorite topics. Like, again, yesterday, like I was telling you guys, I don't have, I don't have a lot of class. Um, not saying if you talk about poop, you don't have a lot of class, but I'm just saying me in general. Uh, I just, you know, I think it's important and I think it's something that nobody talks about. And so, you know, uh, we're going to go there today. We're going to talk about uh, irritable bowel syndrome, which which actually can lead to irritable bowel disease. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, CBD. We're going to talk about what is IBS because I remember when I was diagnosed, I was like, what the, like, this is crazy. So we're going to talk about, we're talking about poo today. I'm going to have fun with you, even if Angie's the only one watching. <laughs> Just kidding. Hi, Angie. Um, so if you're joining me live, uh, if you could type like a heart or some sort of emoji down below, then I can see like who's on. Um, a lot of times like there's that little eye will be on top and I'm like, who is that? I don't know, because they're silent people. Um, if you're joining me on the replay, type replay, and I will say hi later. So, I remember um, getting diagnosed in 2000 and. 15 and actually it was because I kept going to the doctor back and forth I hate Angie um and like my no matter what I ate I would get bloated and we're talking like laughable I mean I of course I can laugh now but like at the time it was like serious and I remember going to my sister who's a doctor um and just being like Martha you don't understand like I literally will blow up within like minutes of eating anything I was to the point where I could only eat certain items so like I don't even remember see this is how bad my memory is and plus I block out those like traumatic times in my life and that was traumatic when I could only eat about four or five things like it was terrible I just would rather I, I actually do remember this just being like I'd rather not eat like I literally was just like I just rather not eat I I'm good not eating maybe that's why I fast so well once a month um because it's it's still like traumatic in my brain <laughs> like remembering that like it was easier not to eat than to eat uh, back when I was trying to figure out what the heck was wrong with my guts. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, in and out, getting x-rays, um, they did a CAT scan. Like, it was just ridiculous back then, like, trying to figure out what the heck was wrong with me and why I was bloating. And actually, I, I feel, okay, so... I'm going to, I'm going to go flip over to this, um, and talk about like what it is. Cause I know I have a lot of friends going through, I, I feel like everyone kind of has these ebbs and flows in life. And, and at some point, all of us will go through, I believe it's leaky gut. I believe it's, you know, the pesticides that we not wanting to, wanting to put into our bodies, but like it's sprayed everywhere. Like there's glyphosate on everything. Like we can't get away with it. Even if we were to spend all our money on organics, like you're still going to breathe in the air. <laughs> like, and I don't know about you, but I live in farm country in Iowa. I'm sure it's all over. It's not like I can go outside in the forest and breathe in the fresh air. It's all corn here, baby. It's all corn. Um, so... Yeah. So, I mean, at some point in our lives, I feel like everybody's going to go through this. Either you're going to have these type of symptoms, you're going to be diagnosed with IBS, or you're just going to have to treat yourself for leaky gut. Like things are leaking. It's literally how it sounds. Leaking out of your intestines until the rest of your body. Food particles don't need to be into your bile, don't need to be into the rest of your body. Okay. So let me just go over some of these like symptoms of IBS. So abdominal pain is the hallmark of IBS. So like abdominal, like your, your, it just hurts. Like it hurts to the touch. It hurts when you touch your stomach area. Um, we almost have like this heightened sense of, um, what does this article say it's called? Visceral, um, visceral pain. So it's like this pain that we get, um, and you can't explain it. Like you can't, like, it's almost like right after you eat, you feel you feel your stomach. It's the most bizarre, annoying feeling ever. Um, and before I started getting super serious about CBD and like, in like looking at articles about digestive system, I'm like, Oh no crap. Like what? Like maybe I'll start taking the capsules. We'll talk about that later. 
Um, but I would, I would literally like feel that feeling all the time and I just wouldn't want to eat. Um, and so let's see, the pain of IBS is both a visceral pain, meaning it comes from your internal organs and a functional pain, meaning there's no structural abnormality within the gut to explain the pain. And that's why no x-rays or nothing will show what this feeling is that's going through like with the nerve endings in your digestive system. Um, Let's see, uh, extra sensitive nerve receptors send messages to your brain telling you there's pain. Um, uh, with this, the brain molds itself into a height, heightened state of reactivity, perceiving and processing mild, non-harmful sensations like gi- digestion as pain. So when I say like, like literally it hurts to the touch, like people don't get it. Like the, the, so this is like classic IBS. And surrounded by cornfields on all sides of our properties. <laughs> oh no! I mean, what are you gonna do, man? I, I don't know. Like, uh, take vacations often. I don't know. Uh, uh, walk around with bare feet outside, try to get some of that good bacteria. Although it's still Iowa, so I don't know. Uh, vacation. I don't. <laughs> that's the only solution. Um, Okay, so due to the fact that IBS is classified as a central sensitivity syndrome, certain antidepressants um, are sometimes included in a treatment plan. These antidepressants not only work to reduce a person's psychological distress, anxiety is common in IBS and may perpetuate the vicious cycle of heightened gut sensitivity, but the activation of pain sensing nerve receptors in the intestines. Um, Everyone experiences IBS pain differently, Getting a general sense of what you might expect can help you put what you're experiencing into perspective. So different characteristics, discomfort from bloating, like literally I would bloat up with, it doesn't even matter if it's one of my allergens, like um, eggs is high in the list and almonds. Almonds, like I'm just stupid. Like I, I know this about my body. And so I had like almond milk the other day and it was like, like I'm like, oh crap. And like my, my skin will start like stretching too. It's so weird when you eat something you're allergic to, you're like, whoa, like what's going on in my body? Anyway, so that's one of the side effects of IBS, just um, discomfort from bloating. And again, you'd be able, I, I would look like seven months pregnant. Like at the time of diagnosis, like trying to figure out what was wrong with me. Um, and of course I self-diagnosed and then it was later diagnosed by a doctor. I was like, dude, I already knew I had IBS. Like, you know, I, I kind of look into things like this. Um, number two, tenderness. When the abdomen is touched, that still kind of happens. Um, number three, painful spasms. Number four, constant aching. So like if it's constantly just like aching um, or sharp and stabbing. So I've had all of these symptoms within the last year. Again, I was diagnosed in um, 2000 and it was right after the divorce. So 2014 is when I moved into the apartment and like I was terrible that whole year, 14 to 15. And then I moved here. So that whole year was like trying to like figure out what was wrong with Nikki. Nikki was in the ER all the time. Nobody knew what was wrong with Nikki. Like Nikki's okay. Like the doctors say I'm okay. Like, okay, okay. Well, I'll, you know, go back next month. Let's go back next month. I'll get another ER doctor to tell me something different. And I literally did that for months because I had, I, I have free, I have free healthcare. So you might as well, you might as well keep going back and bugging them. That's what, that's what I did that year. Um, but, uh, so let's see, triggers, uh, certain foods, irregular eating habits, which is funny because it says, uh, skipping meals, which I think is funny because I actually think it helps when I fast. Um, emotional stress, going through a divorce. Watch out. It's stressful, even if you wanted it. Um, or engaging in overly strenuous exercise may worsen or trigger the pain of IBS. Uh, that's kind of funny now, looking back. I, 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 yeah, I just read this before I went live. I was like, oh, okay. I guess I was teaching a lot of classes at the time. Um, but anyhow, so let's talk about CBD. So, so literally up until now, I have uh, been taking tincture. I, I take tincture for four years now. You guys all know what that is, right? And I haven't taken it yet today, so I'll just show you. Um, so you just put it under your tongue. I haven't eaten anything or drank anything for five minutes. Um, that was 27 milligrams, that dropper. And you just want to hold it under your tongue for like 30 seconds. Um, so anyway... Okay, that was like, what, 10 seconds? Uh, I'm impatient. 
<laughs> did you guys catch my live the other day when I was like, God must like only test people like in the car that drive like 10 miles under the speed limit. They only, he only tests like super impatient people with those people in front of them. Cause you're just like, Oh, I want to ram your car. Anyway, patience is not my virtue. Um, but so I've been taking this for four years, right? Until I started like thinking like, okay, if you ingest, yes, this is sublingual, right? So it's going to your bloodstream, but it's not going through my intestines, which you would think like, oh, actually you're, it's least like effective, which it is like you're, by the time it gets to like through your digestive system, it's probably the efficiency is probably only about 30 or 40% because it's going through your liver, all those enzymes, it's going through your stomach, through your body, you know, bile, all of that, that it's going through it before it gets to your intestines. Right. So in my head, I always thought, ah, this is way better than the capsules. I'm not going to do capsules. Like, and plus the capsules are 15 milligrams. Like what am I really getting? Like a couple milligrams down in my intestines. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. But since I've been taking the capsules and I know it costs money and you guys are like, Nikki, I'm not going to spend Nikki, Nikki, you treat everything with CBD. Yeah, I do. I do. Like every ailment I treat with CBD. So I understand that it's expensive, but here's the thing. If it's going to work, like why not try it? So I'm going to tell you the science of what the book says, but right now I'm telling you my personal story. Um, this is month three of me reordering capsules. So it's been 60 days. I have not experienced any of those like, uh, like I literally like the, the, to the touch hurting that this article is talking about, I would have after every meal, like even with tincture. So it's making a difference taking these capsules, which make no sense to me. It makes no sense, but it's working. All right. So let me read what the, what the science says. So CBD and colitis. So, um, Basically anything gastro. So let's just talk about like gastrointestinal anything. We don't have to specifically talk about colitis the whole time. If you don't know what colitis is, um, it's pretty bad. I, I remember meeting a hot doctor. Or no, he was a dentist. He called himself a doctor, which I always kind of question. It's like, hey, hey, you're a dentist. But anyway, he was super hot and he was really, really skinny. And uh, I think it was like... Um, when I was still teaching, it was during my separation. Anyway, who did I mention he was super hot, but, uh, he had colitis and he was super skinny. Um, and before I knew like what was going on and then like everybody was eating, it was a, it was a baby shower. Um, and I, and I taught classes for the couple that invited me. Like I was their insanity instructor and he wasn't eating anything. And I was like, why? Like, why aren't you eating anything? And he's like, oh, I've got colitis. Like, it's pretty bad. Like, I basically have diarrhea, like, a lot. Like, I can't eat very many things. Like, so anyway, so that's what colitis is. You might want to Google it. Um, people don't really talk about it, but he was super talkative and chatty like me. And so, you know, <laughs> let's just talk poo, okay? I'm the fellow ladies to meet you. My name's Nikki. Let's talk some poo which we did the first time we met. So anyway, all right, colitis is inflammation of the lining of the colon. There are many causes of colitis, including infection, um, IBD, so inflammatory bowel disease. Um, symptoms can include abdominal pain, diarrhea with or without blood, and sometimes fever. Um, conventional treatments include anti-inflammatory drugs, um, steroids, immunomodulators, which work by decreasing the overall immune response. You want to be in my line? I'm talking about poo. No, don't leave. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not talking about poo. I'm kidding. I'm talking about gastro. I just started. I'm not. I'm not done. You're gonna have to sit and wait. Oh, okay. Bye. Have a good day. See ya. Are you really leaving? Oh my god. <laughs> Sean doesn't like hearing about poo. Anyway, I don't know why he's hung out with me for two and a half years now. Like, I literally, like, am like this. Like, I like talking about it. Anyway, so... Um, which work by targeting a specific component of the immune system. These treatments can be quite effective, but are often associated with significantly adverse side effects um, and expensive. Evidence is building that suggests that the endocannabinoid system is involved in many processes in the gastro system, including inflammation, growth of cells that line the gut, motor function, and pain perception. Oh, he really laughed. That's so funny. Um, remember that the role of the endocannabinoid system is to maintain homeostasis of cellular functions. 
The gastrointestinal system contains many cannabinoid receptors. Studies show that endocannabinoid dysfunction and deficiency may be the mechanism by which gut disease, especially inflammation, occurs. Although much research is still needed, initial studies reveal lowered endocannabinoid levels in inflammatory um, bowel disease. And again, you can just relate IBS to this as well. Um, cannabinoids decrease intestinal motility in the normal gut. Studies show that when the bowel is inflamed, as occurs in inflammatory bowel disease, activation of both CB1 and CB2 cannabinoid receptors help to balance gut motility. What this means is that diarrhea, like I was saying, he told me that he like had issues with that, often associated with IBD is reduced when these receptors are activated by cannabinoids. By these. Quite interestingly, a large dose of cannabinoids was effective in inflamed bowel when compared to a healthy bowel, which is thought to be due to increased receptors being present in the disease state. Researchers have also found that increasing the healthy bacteria in the gut increases the expression of type 2 cannabinoid receptors, which modulate pain perception in the gut. So this is everything I just told you about IBS as well. And this is why I don't have that anymore as far as like the feeling it to the touch, um, that that weird feeling that I get after I eat that I was that I told you that I've had for years. I've evaluated thousands of patients with gastro disease who have successfully results or who have had successful results with cannabis treatment. These patients report that many symptoms, including nausea, poor appetite, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and bloating, respond to treatment with cannabis. So remember when we say cannabis, we're talking about hemp or marijuana. Um, Often patients with nausea and vomiting prefer to inhale as the onset of relief is immediate. Inhaling mean vaping, which I'm charging right now, so I can't show you. Um, other patients have found success with sublingual tinctures, so I just showed you, and specifically with CBD-rich medicine due to its potent anti-inflammatory effects. So this right here is saying that she's found most of them like high CBD, not even marijuana, not even THC except I haven't read on, so now she's talking about THC. Some patients with gastro illness, an inability to, sorry, somebody called, um, to use edible cannabis products as they can cause further gastrointestinal upset. Okay, so they can't use edibles. As with other disease states, patients may find that THC-rich, CBD-rich, or a combination of THC and T CBD cannabis may be helpful depending on trial and error. Well, obviously, in states that it's not legal, we don't have that option. We only have the option of CBD, which is good enough. Um, I encourage patients with significant colitis symptoms to include CBD in their medicine regimen, even if they find THC to be helpful. Because again, what CBD will do is it will eliminate the psychoactive effects of THC. So even if they're taking THC, if they add CBD to their regimen, they're not going to feel all, you know, baked and crazy with this THC. Terpenoids that have been found to specifically help the gut include terp Benoline, beta carophylline, lemonine, and pinene, which is all in our products as well. Um, so I will post the sources down below. It just makes sense, you guys. Like, it just makes sense. And um, everything that I'm reading about it, it's like, okay, this is why I have results taking the capsules because it's going straight to my guts. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. I hope you learned something. And um that's hilarious that Sean came over and left. <laughs> That's how impatient he is too. He could have waited five minutes while I talk about poo. And I wasn't even talking about poo the whole time. It's science, yo. Like, come on, learn a little. Learn a little. Um, so tonight I'm going to talk about hair loss, which is going to be fab. I'm going to do it at night. Um, so most dudes will be on. So see you there about 830 Central. Have a great day.